best projection results, please focus picture and adjust sound volume now. It's 8 o'clock in Cleveland. The day has started for this utility crew. More underground equipment is being planted where a new subdivision will soon take root. It's 8 o'clock in Detroit. The trencher carves deep furrows for the underground cable that will be dropped into place this afternoon. Eight o'clock in Chicago, too. And the lineman takes the wraps off today's first primary termination. Yes, it's eight o'clock in three cities. All three utility crews are installing underground residential distribution. But the way they're doing it is as different as day and night. Three utilities. Chicago's Commonwealth Edison. Cleveland Electric Illuminating. Detroit Edison. Three utilities. Three individual URD concepts. But there's one thing common to all. RTE Safe Break Terminator System. The heart of this system is a simple device, uncomplicated and dependable. Proved out in test after test, the RTE safe brake is quiet, even on high current fault close-ins at 10,000 amps, 8 kV to ground. Compare this to the conventional open type cutout. And here's what really makes the safe brake system practical. It has universal plugability, just like this plug and wall socket. Place the components of the safe break system in the hands of inventive utility engineers and they become highly effective tools for solving many switching and terminating problems. In a compact cabinet on the side of a house, in a pad type transformer, inside a buried vault, or in a plain hole in the ground. The RTE safe break system was designed to help free the engineer of many termination problems. Its components are practical tools that speed and widen underground distribution. That's what this motion picture is all about. Various applications of this versatile development. Our camera started here with this pad type plan installed by Commonwealth Edison in the Chicago area. It features rear lot line construction with each transformer serving up to 12 homes. The planning behind this system is described by Ed Ellifred, distribution design engineer. With our experience with some 70,000 customers, and we've tried putting the trenches in the front, we've tried them in the rear, and we've finally come up with the most, the best way is, that we have found is to install a trench in the rear that was randomly with a telephone company. The other advantage we like of the pad mount transformer is the fact that we can load our transformers the same loading we would with an overhead transformer. Using this plan, Commonwealth Edison crews are expanding URD at a rapid rate in the greater Chicago area. This compact dead front Terratran is the key component in the system. Installation is a simple routine starting with the preparation of the neutral. Next, the primary cables are prepared. Great care is taken in cleaning to eliminate damaging contaminants. Silicone grease is used to lubricate the components. The male contact is tightened with a special tool 
included in the safe break kit. Using these easy to learn techniques, line crews can install pad mounts in record time. We have investigated all of the types of dead front transformers which have been proposed in the last few years. And we've chosen the load brake elbow as being the safest, the most economical, uh, the most reliable, and because it can offer a lower silhouette for the transformer, as offering the most in aesthetics. Uh, the other thing which we are like about this concept is the fact that we have several sources for the transformers, for the elbows, for the bushings, which of course allows us complete interchangeability. The Commonwealth Edison installation is more than neat appearing. It's a practical system designed for easy maintenance. URD was installed in this attractive suburb several years ago. Terratrans have long since blended into the landscape. If trouble should occur, at this portion of the loop, a two-man crew can quickly isolate the section of primary cable. Sectionalizing begins at transformer A. All SBT accessories can be operated with a shotgun stick. The faulted cable is placed on a standoff bushing. A protective cap is installed. Now, half of the sectionalizing operation is completed. The sectionalizing is repeated at the other end of the faulted cable at transformer B. The cable is sectionalized and grounded. The isolated and grounded section of the loop is ready for whatever repair work may be necessary. Another utility using the Safe Break Terminator system is the Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company. This layout of a street development illustrates the CEI modular concept. It's called URD 1970. The red line represents primary cable installed in easements along the street front. The blue circles are switching modules installed on every other lot line. CEI's modular concept is described by Ken Klein, General Supervising Engineer. We chose this system for four reasons. Safety, flexibility, reliability, and economy. This modular system with direct buried transformers, I believe, optimizes these factors into the best possible approach. Actual URD 1970 installation begins with placement of a 36-inch common concrete tile. It will be the cubicle for the service module. Primary loop cables will be pulled into this tile. When houses are constructed, transformers are installed next to the cubicles, and service cables are connected to the switching module. In the CEI system, the transformer is direct buried. The transformer cavity will be deep enough to lower the transformer below the four-foot cubicle. If the transformer is 25 kVA or larger, it is placed inside this special heat exchanger, which will be filled with water. Transformer and primary cables are plugged into an RTE T-tap. We chose the modular switching for several reasons, one of which is safety. We feel that our operating people deserve the safest system possible. And with oilless switching that is also a dead front, we think we've attained this. Also, we want to maximize the reliability of our system and its flexibility. We get the flexibility in giving the engineer the opportunity to install only that portion of switching and fusing that is necessary for any one tap or transformer location. And we get the service reliability by installing switches at the optimum point in a loop so as to minimize 
uh, time outages due to failures of any part of the system. A very important feature of the CEI module is its flexibility. It can be modified a number of ways and adapted to any type of system. Possible combinations could include three load brakes, two non-load brakes and one load brake, two load brakes with one non-load brake, or any other desired combination. Well, it really makes no difference whether this is, in is installed front lot line or rear lot line, above ground or below. It also is totally adaptable to one transformer per home or multiple homes per transformer. I feel it also will have wide acceptability for commercial installations as well as residential. And it's for these reasons that I feel that industry acceptance of this will ultimately result in standardization. Detroit Edison applies creative engineering in the flush Wood Creek Hill subdivision. Spacious lots like these and homes that cost as much as $65,000 create special problems. Underground standards engineer Al Price conceived a T-tap in a box as the answer. We at the Detroit Edison felt we wanted to build an optimum underground system with all of its associated benefits. Therefore, we arrived at this present system, which is really a simplified one with three component parts, primary cable, a transformer, and a switching compartment. The electrically heated and cooled homes at Wood Creek Hills require 22 kW loading capabilities. Detroit Edison installs individual sectionalizing equipment on each home. These individual systems are not installed until the house is actually under construction. This advanced planning preserves capital investment. Service connection can be made with no interruptions to other customers. Here's how Detroit Edison installs service at House B. The work begins here at House C. Each box is equipped with an RTE T-TAC. Three load brake bushings complete the loop. The test and grounding bushing can be mounted in either of two pockets. Crews use hotline tools for switching. A protective cap is put on the exposed bushing. The sectionalizing operation is repeated at House A on the other side of the new installation. After a safety check with a status scope, the cable at both houses is grounded and tagged. Now the piece of cable in front of house B is isolated and grounded at both ends. The cable is cut and spliced twice so it may be looped into and out of the switching box at House B. The advantages of our system is that it provides for reliability, future load growth, and continuity of service from the standpoint of change out and replacement equipment. The new transformer will be buried next to the house. The RTE direct burial type transformer has been equipped with primary and secondary cable extensions. The transformer has a special ArmorTech vinyl coating to resist corrosion. Primary cables from the transformer and the street line are threaded into the new switch box for installation on the T-TAC. The primaries are fitted to SBT elbows and are simply plugged onto the T-TAC. The switching compartments, however, at each house is the optimum point. This provides flexibility and operation at every location. However, in the future, if it is desirous of reducing the cost, these points may be reduced to every two houses, three or four, or whatever combination is desired. When T-TAP terminations are complete, the transformer and cable trenches are partially backfilled. Telephone lines are laid in the same trench. 
power is restored and the installation is complete. Yes, the safe brake system was developed for creative distribution applications. Six feet from a sandbox, six feet below the front yard, or on the side of the house, six inches from the chimney. And RTE research engineers are working on additional devices that will extend the safe break system's versatility and usefulness. Any climatic condition can be recreated within the anechoid chambers. Here, noise levels are being recorded on a prototype of a compact 10 kVA transformer being developed jointly with Duke Power Company engineers. This special transformer is designed to operate on a pad beside the house. The unit features a window for reading the meter inside of the secondary compartment. A door provides the customer with access to the secondary breaker panel. At the primary end, a door can be removed for easy switching and sectionalizing of the unit's two load brake terminators. This is the load brake cable tap mounted on a new lift-up bracket. It can be used in any underground switching application. If, however, you remove the cover and find this, the lift-up bracket will bail you out. Coiled cables allow the unit to be easily raised and serviced. Underground or underwater, RTE has a safe shotgun stick operable system for fast switching. At this very moment, our research laboratories are at work on still more devices that will expand the use of this remarkable SBT system. Where will all of our URD research end? We wouldn't attempt to tell you. Research and development at RTE is always linked to the changing needs of the dynamic utility industry. And by tomorrow morning, there will be another creative engineering group in still another utility, applying its own interpretation to URD technology. Whatever the group, wherever the utility, the SBT system will undoubtedly play a vital role in URD progress.